Welcome back to Comic Frontline, everybody. I am Brant Fowler, a.k.a. The Gonzo Goose, back with you for another review. This time I'm talking about Heroes Reborn, the uh, two-hour season premiere. As you guys know, I started the following the Eclipse uh, series and uh, with an intro video and never kind of followed through with that time. Just got away from me. Work got crazy. And uh, unfortunately, I was not able to do it before the premiere, but I'm going to try to still do it. Um, hopefully, uh, starting next week, the videos will start flowing in for that. But until then, Heroes Reborn did air last night, and if you watched Media Madness, you saw I was a guest on Media Madness, and I talked with Cat J and Mike from Real School all about the premiere, and we were a little bit underwhelmed. Well, today I had a chance to um, rewatch the two-hour season premiere of Heroes Reborn, and kind of... Um, kind of take it in better. I got to watch it in HD. I didn't get to watch it in HD uh, live because I don't get the channel in HD for some reason. Uh, so I got to watch it in HD and uh, just kind of take it all in and kind of dissect a, a few things, try to pick up things I didn't pick up the first time through. And uh, I think I have a better opinion, a better informed opinion about uh, the two hour premiere now um, as opposed to right after you know that was my gut reaction and I, I love doing the media madness because of that that was the gut reaction as, of what we thought as heroes fans uh, coming into this series and uh, seeing what it's all about so now after a second viewing I do have to say that I enjoyed it a little bit more than um, my initial viewing of it I feel like though a lot of the points that we made in media madness are still valid I think there are too many uh, analog characters here in this series. They're, they're parallels of the original uh, hero's characters. You have the hero and o combination, even though it's done a little bit differently, where hero was this lovable kind of uh, funny guy in, in a way, in his awkwardness and everything. You have this uh, uh, Japanese girl who goes into a video game, which is still a very odd power, and I'm, I'm wondering if it's not... I, I don't know what the deal is with that. It's it's kind of it needs to be explained uh, how that's even possible in this uh, in this world. Um, but you have her and the sidekick Ren, I think is his name. Uh, they're kind of like Hero and Ando a little bit, but she's definitely more serious uh, than Hero was. You have your uh, Tommy, who's kind of an analog of both Peter and Claire, kind of wrapped up into one. And, you know, you have uh, a new uh, memory stealer, um, like the Haitian. So it's different um, different characters, but the same characters in a way as well, which I don't like. I wish they would go beyond that and do something different. And I do understand, you know, that the original premise was, okay, there's just multiples of these certain powers, but we kept getting introduced to new powers as the series continued and now we're getting introduced even more so it's like okay are there still just variations of these or have we blown that rule out the window and you know it's everything anything that could possibly be we just don't know um at this point but all that aside uh you know there there is the uh the connection through hrg there's the connection by seeing the haitian even though well, you know, I'm not going to I'm going to try not to spoil it too bad in this particular review. There's the uh, appeal of the of the Haitian there. We know that Micah is going to be in the series later on and there's mentions of Suresh and um, uh, we see Glimpse's apartment coming in the future as the dogs are going crazy because somebody's here and uh, uh, Micah coming up. Uh, I think I already mentioned him <laughs> I'm forgetting what I'm saying. So that, that's fine and well. We do have that connection. My problem with it was, if you didn't watch the web series Dark Matters, which is a six-part uh, web series that they did on NBC's Heroes page, uh, which featured, which debuted the character Quentin and his sister Phoebe and the hero truth that was mentioned in this uh, premiere episode. Um, if you didn't watch that, you don't know what's going on. You're just introduced into this havoc. It's like okay, we know it's five years into the future from where Heroes left off in Season 4. So you, it's five years from that point. That is established. Then we see flashbacks of a year ago, uh, seven months ago, whatever. It's leading up to the present, showing you kind of how it progressed from 
the uh, terrorist attack a year ago up to the present day. And so there's that. Um, then you, uh, but the problem is you're just thrown right into this, assuming that you have knowledge of the previous series and the characters and, and all this stuff, and you're not really given any kind of recap, any kind of information uh, to base your opinions on with this. If you're coming into this cold and you've never watched the first series, then you have no idea what's going on. You have no idea who HRG is or who the dead cheerleader is, and it's just, it's a lot of information that was handled kind of clumsily as a... Uh, I've been getting a visitor coming in my room as I'm trying to record a review. <laughs> but it's okay. Um, Lisa watched it with me. She's coming into the room with me. <laughs> so, But she's not going to be on the review. Um, I don't even know where I left off. But that, that was my problem with uh, the, um, the whole disconnect there is because you didn't have that frame of reference. You didn't have a recap. And Lisa's a perfect example. She was talking to me about it. And I'm going to be talking to her now <laughs> as I'm doing this review. It's kind of funny. Uh, because uh, she only watched the first season and then just early part of season two. Yeah, like four episodes. Like four episodes of season two. So she didn't have that frame of reference for what happened between the first part of season two and season four and then these five year jump so there was that kind of disconnect going on so that was that was an unfortunate um misstep in the, the premiere here i do think some of the characters on upon second viewing are more interesting than i originally thought i think tommy is an interesting character i think they're going to try to build a lot of it around him and of course molly's going to come into play some way somehow um they've, they've kind of you know, tiptoed around her and then introduced her towards the end. And we have this other character who I believe is going to be Melina, is the uh, Northern Lights girl. <laughs> That's okay. Rainy's trying to jump in her lap. Um, she growls when she tries to jump. Um, so there are some interesting threads going on here. There's some interesting characters, but a lot of the interesting characters. Uh, the, the guy that, um, at the very beginning of the show, he cuts off his hand and flies away. He gets killed, like, immediately. The Invisible Man running through the woods, he gets killed immediately. And that's, this all happens in the very early part of the episode, so I'm not really spoiling too much for you there. Um, so some of these interesting characters that we've met, they're just done away with uh, almost immediately. And it, it's kind of, okay, I, I get that they needed expendable characters to show that there, there is a threat. Uh, but it just, I don't know, it, it was a little clumsy, uh, the whole coming together of uh, this uh, two-hour premiere. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Yeah, it was a little clumsy. Yeah. But... A little forced in places, but... Yeah, like we, we said on Media Madness, I felt like Carlos's character was really forced. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have no connection to that character whatsoever, the, the guy that is taking up the mantle of the mask. I like the neck. Uh, the kid. Yeah, the kid who, who can... I don't know if he can, like, put his hand through things or if he's becoming part of it. or yeah, I or I, I like him. Uh, he, he was interesting, but Carlos, not so much. Not yet. Yeah. No, Maybe no, so. Bro. I do like uh, Zachary Le Levi's character of Luke. He's... Um, I, I watched it again, and I, I feel like he's a really compelling character. His wife I can't stand, still, even watching it a second time. I really kind of want her to die, or just go off on her own somewhere. Um, and I kind of hope that somehow he develops a power late in this whole thing, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I could be totally off base. Maybe he's just supposed to be normal. Um, but, you know, I, I like him as an actor and I like his character a little bit because he's on the fence and he seems like a very intelligent character he's like why is there no light switch and he, it's all these kind of things and you get the feeling that the wife blames him for their loss of the loss of the son and I think that's going to cause a rift in the future um, but the the Japanese girl I can't think of her name um, but Miko that's it Miko and or katana girl if you want to call her that story is just so weird i i want to know why she's in a video game it just makes no sense to me uh like i said earlier in the review i think they're throwing all the rules out the window now but i i do think this series has potential um i i definitely think you should watch it in hd because i think that really kind of soured my viewing experience i, I finished it uh the second viewing in hd and i really enjoyed it more 
um, despite all the all the misgivings that I have about it. But I, I think uh, you know I, I've read a few reviews, and a lot of people are saying that this is the best Heroes has been since season one. I'm not sure I agree with that. I think. Season 3 actually picked up for me. I think Season 3 was quite enjoyable, at least for the first half of it. Um, this, still, I'm not connected as much as I would like to be to the characters in this. And I, I feel that in the original Hero series, we got connected immediately to several of the characters. And uh, the core characters were Peter Petrelli, Claire Bennett, and uh, Hiro Nakamura. Um, these three drove the stories and they, they pulled you in and they, they formed the heart and the soul of the show and we have none of that you liked Isaac yeah but we have none of that we have none of these uh, super compelling characters that just make us want to watch each and every week yet uh, so you know you can't you know capture lightning in a bottle I said that to you last night and uh, I I I do think, though, that they could build on this and, and create something uh, special, especially if they, if some of these mysteries um, kind of start piecing together more coherently, because right now we had a lot of information thrown at us. There were a lot of Easter eggs thrown at us. There was a lot of uh, um, references and that kind of thing that we just, if, if you're not an avid fan, you're not going to pick up on any of that. Um, so I, I think it needs to be more coherent. It, it needs to flow a little bit better. Hopefully, as it goes on, it finds its footing once again. I think it's it's kind of struggling. In its its ties are too much to the the former series that came before it. It needs to kind of separate itself a little bit and become its own thing. I think, especially after so long and with all those actors not attached to it anymore. I think they need to kind of reinvent themselves a little bit and instead of a reinvention we got a little bit of a rehash and a little bit of a follow-up so hopefully in the weeks to come it, it will do just that it will kind of give us that final chapter on the uh, original series and if it does get picked up for another season then we can go on from there and uh, continue on but overall i think i'm gonna up my grade just a, just a little bit i give it a three and a half on medium madness i'm gonna up it to three and three quarters um, it's still not quite a four for me, uh, but I did enjoy it a little bit more. So I, I'm looking forward to good things with the series. And uh, I'm a huge Heroes fan, though. I, I'm trying to be, um, what's the word? Unbiased. Yeah, I'm trying to be unbiased and uh, trying to view it for, for the flaws that it has. Um, but as a Heroes fan, I'm just excited that it's back, and I want to see what new and exciting things that they can do with it. So three and three quarter stars for me for the two hour season premiere of Heroes Reborn. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, check out all the other uh, videos and reviews here on Comic Frontline. Tune in Tuesday nights at around 9.30 Eastern Time PM uh, for the live show. And don't forget if you missed the video version, the audio version is on iTunes. And uh, as far as me, there's a new episode of Zone 4 up on Comic Frontline right now. The audio version will be up uh, later tonight, so you guys can check that out. And um, uh, check out lastnumberpress.com. And I guess that's it. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.